So David, infrastructure as a service, we've heard of software as a service, even platform as a service. We've even heard of cloud computing, which a lot of people would use to define internet computing these days. Tell me, is infrastructure as a service just another term for cloud computing? I think the easiest way to, to, to walk your way through the minefield, because the terms are confusing, is if you think of cloud computing as a collective noun, then the other terms fall within, within that category. So some aspects of cloud computing are consumer orientated, mm -hmm. some are um, enterprise corporate uh, orientated, some of them are about infrastructure, some are about software, and then when you get to platform sometimes then you're talking about combining the two things. Mm -hmm. And infrastructure as a service is defined by Fujitsu is very much the corporate business focused part. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. focused entirely on, on, our, on our corporate customers. Okay, so imagine I've just met you, we're sitting on a plane and I say, okay, tell me about this infrastructure as a service, I'm a business guy, I understand a fair bit about technology, why should I be interested? Okay, well I think the, the, the key kind of messages around why you should be interested are about flexibility, they're about speed uh, and they're about cost as ever. So the aim of the service is to give you a, a flexible service that you pay for as you consume it. You can ramp it up and down depending on your business needs at the time. Um, you can decide to uh, have it linked just to your company or you can make it broader in terms of uh, access to your clients, your clients and uh, their customers. And you're really talking about accessing infrastructure over the internet, the public internet. Uh, not necessarily having servers and storage and all of this kind of expense within your own internal data center? I think the word, the, the internet piece, we need to be careful on. Mm -hmm. so, so certainly it's talking about having the server infrastructure sat in, in, in our data center. Mm -hmm. um, it's having the appropriate level of security, depending on what the application is that you've asked us to look after and, and what it does for your business. Um, and almost certainly most uh, corporates will want it to be over a private network. So if it is going over the internet, then it would be a, a VPN type solution, but most of the time it's more likely to be a private network. Now you're a CIO, so you know how difficult it is to get money to invest in IT infrastructure these days. If I'm a CIO and I'm reporting into the FD or I'm trying to get money from the FD, what do I say that infrastructure as a service is really going to bring to the business? What's it going to do for the decision makers up there? I think, I think that the primary message is it allows you to, to manage the impact on the P&L and it allows you to link that impact to consumption. So it allows you to bypass uh, capital expenditure so you don't have that. Um, it allows you to avoid project costs that if you did it internally could be quite substantial. There will obviously be project costs but um, what you're moving to is a scalable platform that's there waiting for you and all the risk around is it big enough, is it fast enough, you transfer that to the provider. Okay. So you give them the proposition, tell them what you need, and they have to make sure that they're ready for you. So you can get projects up and running nice and quickly, you can uh, react to changes in the market, and you can move CapEx to OpEx, which a lot of companies these days obviously want to do. Exactly, and it, it also gives you a, a lot of flexibility around things like test and development environments. So if you, if you need a lot for some reason, you've got a big, big um, bulge of activity in your business, you can ramp that up. If you're not doing any of that, and you're just in production run, you can ramp it back down again. So the speed... Um, and the agility factor is really key. And if you, were, if you were looking for a provider, that's one of the big questions that you need to be asking them. Okay, it all sounds fantastic. However, you know, if I speak to CIOs out there, the one thing many, many of them will say is, I've tried something like Salesforce.com, I love it for this or that. But the one concern they'll have is security, security, security. How do you get around those uh, arguments? I think they're great, they're great points. And as a CIO, I always want to know where my data is. And I always want to know who can see it and who can touch it. And I think the conversation you need to have with the provider is, is based around that. So it's how secure is the data center? Does it match the level of security that I need for my business? Who can see the data? What uh, industry standards are you operating to? If we're in the government space, what level of accreditation does the data center have? Do the staff that are touching my data have? So I think it's uh, a dialogue rather than a binary, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. but, but absolutely, you, you really won't want to put your data out into public, public uh, scrutiny. Yeah. Some people will say, you know, they're convinced of the security argument. However, there might be some governance sort of bylaw rule or process that stops them having that data sitting potentially outside of the UK or some other area of jurisdiction. Is there a way around that issue? I think, I think again, it's a great point, and it's true that in some of the services that you can, you can buy today under the term cloud computing, you don't know where your data is. It could be processed anywhere in the world. The data centre could, could be anywhere in the world. Absolutely, you need to make sure that the provider is going to host your data either within the European Union, which is typically where, where people like to restrict it to. Again, if you're in government, then there'll be rules about whether it can go outside of the UK boundaries. And I, I would imagine that um, most credible providers can give you a decent answer to that. If they can't, then the, the alarm bell should be ringing. 
Oh, so David, where are we now? Presumably most companies aren't going to chuck the baby out with the bathwater. They're going to take a bit of a phased approach. Absolutely. People will um, glide into the service, I think, in, in the main. There will be people that will take it big bang, but I think there'll be fewer and far between. I think people will start with test and development services, perhaps line of business applications, and then as they get more comfortable with the service and they understand how it operates, then they'll move on to the rest of their infrastructure and, and, the, and the rest of their, uh, their IT platform. Well, we're already seeing a bit of a, a mixed approach from companies out there, aren't we? Uh, we see some media companies, Telegraph, Guardian and so on, and they're really diving in. Uh, other companies are, are not over my dead body sort of approach. Uh, presumably certain applications go on quickly, others take a long, long time. You're right. I mean, I think there's, as ever with any IT technology change, there are early adopters that, that uh, take the pain to get the gain. There are other people that like to go a little bit more in a measured way. Um, one of the things that your provider should be offering to you is they should have already gone through some of this. So they should be talking to you about, we have tested this, we know this works rather than, well, let's try it together. That's really not what you want to hear. You want to hear that they've done it. Yeah, there's always that element of the, the sort of shock of the new. And I guess one of the big concerns I would have if I was the CIO of this stuff is, OK, I can understand the appeal technologically, et cetera. However, is this going to be a big change management uh, exercise? Is it going to be a cultural uh, feeling that you're going to have to shift within the organization? Do you see that as being a, a sticking point? Uh, no, but I think, again, it depends on how aggressively the, the client's driving. So. Um, if at the same time as moving across to uh, an infrastructure as a service offering, you decided to virtualize everything, and then obviously you're exponentially increasing risk, adding to complexity. I think if you just come across as is, um, then it's a bit it, sure there's a change management process, but IT organizations do that every day. That's, that's part of what they exist to do. So there shouldn't be a big, a big shock or, or worry about that. Yeah, I think we're getting to the sort of grid in the oyster now. And one thing that interests me is, uh, all of these as-a-service type platforms are often approached as a way to save cost, certainly to take CapEx off uh, the balance sheet, yeah, to be sure. able to spread it into OPEX as we discussed earlier. Yeah. However, maybe there's a catch there that as you have this pay-as-you-go, pay-as-you-eat kind of uh, tariff, mm -hmm. do you not then end up with a bigger bill than you would have had with the upfront license plus maintenance model that we've had for the last 20 years? No, I don't think so. And I think the um the onus is on the provider to make sure there's no sting in the tail, because I understand what, what you mean. But I think the, uh, the provider's job is to give access to the service based on really very impressive technology. Um, our partners are people like Cisco, the people like EMC, VMware. Um, so it's cutting edge um, technology, best in breed. Um, and really it's, it's for us as the provider to make sure that there isn't that sting in the tail of suddenly having to reinvest, because normally that's triggered by an investment cycle. So you've bought the platform, you've reached the point where it needs renewing, suddenly there's a big lump sum. That's for us to smooth. And of course you need to remember that, that we're spreading this over multiple clients. So the degree of sharing obviously depends on the security requirements. So some clients will want everything absolutely purely for them. But equally others will be willing to share some aspect, whether it's the storage or the compute um, or even just the management module. So again that helps kind of for the provider make sure that, that they can manage that, that, that uh, cost flow. David, you mentioned appetite for risk. I'm sure a lot of people out there that are interested in this stuff will be asking a big question, which is, if I don't like it, how easy is it, is it to get out of here? How easy is it to be able to ditch the whole exercise and go back to what they were doing before? It's an interesting question. Uh, I think if um, it, you don't get into changing your environment, so it, almost if we use the phrase lift and shift for, for ease, mm -hmm. then it's very easy. Because as long as you've not uh, decommissioned your data center, sold your servers, um, then what we're talking about is data migration and um, you can migrate it to us but equally you can migrate it away from us and um, Fujitsu has a great reputation I think for handling that two-way flow so sometimes cli clients come sometimes they go the trick is that you treat them well because hopefully you want them back so mm. there is no point in, in parting on bad terms. So David obviously there are other companies out there what's the big difference for Fujitsu what's the USP? Well, I think the, the, the first one is that um, our solutions build on Fujitsu technology. Obviously, we have the other partners that I mentioned earlier, Cisco, um, EMC, and VMware, but um, we build it with our own product. I think the fact that we're in the UK and we, we're live now today, so we have the service, we can deliver it today, and we're actually in delivery mode with our first client uh, all today as of 29th of January. In a few weeks' time, we will be live. Oh, fantastic. Thanks so much for sharing your thoughts today, David. Pleasure. Well, thanks very much for watching. Do feel free to get in touch with Fujitsu directly.